What's up, YouTube? So today is Green Day. No, uh, I don't want to get sued. Not Green Day, as in the band Green Day. It is Pentax Green Day, as in this video is going to be all about the green button on the back or top of your Pentax camera. Now, the green button is like the jack of all trades in regards to the camera. And my dog thinks that I'm some other person, so he's barking. Anyway, it's like a jack of all trades. Uh, it is a fantastic tool for beginners, amateurs, pros, advanced users, everybody, all encompassing. It is the greatest tool that you can possibly use, especially if you're using old lenses that are manual. Um, you know, they have an automatic aperture lever, do not have an automatic aperture lever. You can preview what you've actually, what you actually have set up. Um, you can get an exact exposure by using the green mode. And I'm just going to quickly show you, uh, not through the viewfinder because I found that extremely difficult. So this will have to all be done in live view. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll get into the green button and here we go. So we're going to be using two different styles of lenses. This is a completely manual SMC Takumar 55 1.8 mounted to the front of my K3. And uh, using both the combination of the green button and this wonderful little guy here, the optical or digital preview, which I have it set to optical so that you can actually see depth of field and all that other fun stuff. Uh, so let's get this mounted here and fire this up yes it's 55 put in live view okay so if you want to just take a shot i already have it pre-focused so now you see the highlights are completely and utterly blown out and if you actually look at the preview you can see this one sec here where are we where's the histogram display you can see it's way overcompensated. So the highlights are completely and utterly blown out. There's no definition all across the board. So how do we fix that using the green button? Well, if you want to be really lazy about it, you can actually just hit the green button. And right here, it went from 20, went from, what was that first shot here? The first shot was 1 60th of a second. Went straight to 2,500. So I'm going to change the shutter speed again, bring it back down, say 1 60th. Now, using the optical preview, if you look at the histogram, you'll notice it's spiked all the way over to the right. And you can see the difference in the LCD screen as well. Now, that's going to be way overexposed, so hit the green button. It meters, 1 2,000th of a second, ISO 160. Preview it. Boom, perfect. Take a shot. And there you have it. Beautiful. And from there, you can make a few slight adjustments. So this is a good tool if you want to learn how the histogram actually functions uh, because you can just set a base exposure and then you can, you know, change the ISO. And then you can check. So you can already tell it's going to be dark. So let's raise the ISO, go to 400, see what that's going to be like, and that might be okay. That's yeah, not too bad, slightly blown out just over here. So bring that down to 1 250th, preview it. Doesn't seem like it's going to have shadow detail that just a little bit off there so let's go to 200 and that should be good there we go slightly slightly burnt out there so if you wanted to deal with that then what you could actually do is let's move the camera take a reading one four thousandth so let's go back here. Now it should take care of those highlights. And there you go. 
easy as that. So now let's go on to a lens that actually has an automatic aperture control and you'll see exactly how the uh, stop down metering actually works. So I'm going to mount a Sigma 17500 APO and uh, let's just go. Okay, so here I'm going to try to show you how the open aperture metering actually works. Let me stand here so I'm kind of allowing you to be able to see. Now, if I press the green button, the aperture closes when I press the green button. So it's taking an exact reading of what the aperture is going to be set at. But in order to do your focusing, it's leaving the aperture completely open. Now I'm going to change the aperture. Right now it's at f8. Let me change that to 22. Actually, wait, where am I here? All right, so let's go f32. So it should close way down. See that? And when you do the preview, it does the same thing to give you an exact depth of field preview. So these two in combination with each other are absolutely useful tools that everybody should learn how to use on their Pentax camera. Now we're at F5, so it should just barely stop down. Yeah, you can't even see it because it's already pretty much wide open. Let's go to F8 again. There you go. So that's pretty much what the green button actually does. So the green button is basically a lifesaver and uh, a very quick reset. Um, you know, if you've been messing around with your settings and you don't even realize, you know, you accidentally changed something. So we're at one two thousandth. Um, you know, you take a shot. And you're like, oh, okay, that's actually pretty blown out. I don't like that. Um, okay, so someone told me that I need to increase my ISO. So you increase your ISO, you take another shot. You're like, oh, that's that's even worse. I don't like, what am I supposed to do? Well, it's very simple. You can just get a base exposure. Bring your ISO back down first of all cuz that was way 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 too high. So let's try 800. And there you go. So it's reading the actual aperture of the lens where it's actually set, which is f8. So you can take a little preview. Okay, take a shot. And there you go. So that's pretty much the green button in a nutshell. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the very quick, dirty explanation and uh, advantages of having the green button on your Pentax camera. I completely forgot. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and you guys will see me on my next video. I'm out.